Hey everyone, it's your favorite binary ninja, Omni, the Omni Scientist. Here to give you the very first ever Let's Hack Hacker Log of me Omnifying a new game completely from scratch. Instead of Omnifying a game on a stream like I used to, I'm doing it offline instead. So this way I can give you the most important parts of the whole process. As to what actually makes a game Omnified, well, that's a complicated question that I'll be putting up some more general purpose Let's Hack videos to cover. Uh, but you're gonna see the process being done here. The next game we're gonna Omnify is Sekiro. I'm a very big fan of From Software games, and I'm excited for this game uh, to be the very first that I Omnify. Before I can write any of my crazy hacks that turn the game into an absurd carnival of death, I need to first disassemble and gather some very important bits of data. One of these is the player's health. That's usually the first thing that I grab and that I write code for. And that's what we're gonna be figuring out today. So how do we get that health value? First of all, what type of value is the health? Typically it is a float. However, it is not always a float. I've seen it stored as a as about four bytes, two bytes. We don't really know. So let's just go with all, which I've configured to include float and all the other relevant types. And then we don't know what the actual uh, value of the health is. We can see the red bar down there, but we don't uh, know the numerical value for it. I don't believe it's in any of the menus or anything. Sometimes it is and it makes our job a lot easier, but for all intents and purposes, it's an unknown value to us. So let's uh, select unknown initial value here. We're gonna do a scan for everything. That is a value type all and is unknown. So it's a lot, eight uh, billion values are still in memory, quite a bit. We're gonna have to narrow it down. And the way we're gonna narrow it down is we're going to um, take some damage and then we're gonna say that the health has been uh, uh, decreased its value. And we're gonna hit next. We're gonna keep on doing that until we're almost dead. Then we're gonna heal a little bit and say that the value is increased. And then we repeat until we find the actual value. So first of all, there's two bad guys out there. Um, let's uh, to make this a little bit easier. We're gonna to wanna to take out one of them. So let's try to kill one of them real quick. I don't really remember how to play this game. So there we go. All right, so we took two hits there. I kind of only wanted it to be one hit. So let's uh, say that uh, we're gonna do another scan here, or, or the next scan is gonna be a decreased value. There you go. So we're gonna go from eight billion to what? All right, 47 million only. Not the worst thing ever. Let's try to take only one hit this time if we can. Come on, hit me once. Any day now. There's another hit. It's decreased again. Seven million. There's another hit. One million. Hey, from eight billion, it's not terrible. So we want to be careful here, we don't want to die. I think we can take one more hit after this. Okay, down to 156,000. So if we want to be safe here though, we probably should heal. Can I go in here? You want to follow me? Great. So let's heal real quick. There we go, we healed a bit. Let's set it then, uh, the next scan to increased value. Please don't come in here. And it's gone up, great. Now, um, just to weed out a bunch of uh, other things going on in the game, let's just let, let it uh, run in the background and we're gonna do a scan type of unchanged value because um, there's a bunch of things changing in the game, of course, but not our health. So that'll weed out a bunch from this 96,000. Now we're down to 9,000. Let's keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. Spam it a bit more. Uh, but we go back in the game and we move the camera around. Filter out all the other, all the non-change values again. Or all the change values, that is, sorry. Keep on going. You having fun there, buddy? <laughs> Down to 3,600. Let's take some more hits here. This is gonna start to get close to what we want. One hit, please. Wow, that, that hurt. All right. Decrease value, 1,500. All right. This guy is angry. Decrease value again. 500, we're getting down there. Now, um, do we have uh, any other ways to heal here? Pellet, it slowly uh, heals you. Let's try to heal ourselves real quick. And if it's slow, that means we can do multiple scans of increased value. Okay, it's gone up two ticks. So let's say it's increased in value. Let me run some more. Saw another tick there. Increased value. Down to 48. Oh, he's getting close. Another uh, tick upwards. 16. 
All right, one of these is our uh, health here. Let's remove all these changing ones, and this is what we're left with. So, um, taking a look at it, I'm gonna guess that these nice looking 132s is potentially our health. Let's take a look at them real quick. So these are actually uh, stored as bites. Uh, very interesting. So again, these are not floats. Many times uh, the health is stored as a float, but not here. So what's the easiest way to see if this is indeed the health? Well, the easiest way to see is to make a change to it and see if the health updates in the game. But first, let's get to safety. All right, let's take a look here. All right, now they're at 186. So uh, we see uh, two bytes, four bytes, eight bytes. Obviously this is all point, pointing to the same address in memory. So let's try toggle, uh, changing this value and see if it, uh, the bar changes in the game. So let's lower it a bit to 100. So see how I changed this and nothing happened? Well that shows you this isn't actually like a, a data point. This isn't actually the truth or the source of the data of concern here. This is a calculated value. Um, it reads from what we're interested in to get this value here. I just noticed looking at this here, there are a few more uh, similar looking values uh, right here and here. Let's add these to the address list. Let's uh, try changing these and see if the health bar updates. There we go. I changed this to 100 and you can see that the bar um, changed. So we have found the health uh, using a very simple technique. So a lot of people get that. Um, very easy to do. Uh, you know, after you see the process and kind of get it through your head. Um, one thing I hear a lot during streams is people asking me, how can I get it so this, uh, this value that you found will work um, when you restart the game or when you die? Because a lot of times it won't. And indeed, this address that we found the health in, many times is dynamically allocated. Most of the times, 99% of the time it's gonna be dynamically allocated. That's just how modern uh, applications work on computers these days. Um, so the way I do it is via injection. Um, injection means we inject our own code into code that we know is going to look at the player's health. And we're gonna let the program do most of the work in terms of like finding out where the, the value is. So what we need to do is we need to um, uh, check uh, what code accesses the player's health, and then that's where we're going to inject. So to do that, first of all, let's mark this as the actual uh, health for the player. I'm gonna right click here, we're gonna do find out what access is this address. This is what's gonna read it. And uh, this pops up, this shows us all the different instructions accessing this address here. And so, these could be a whole, these functions here could be a, responsible for a whole mess of things. Um, they could be pulling, you know, not just my health, but other creatures' health, you know, getting doing a general uh, area-wide pull of uh, health of different creatures for whatever purpose. What we really want here is we want to find if there's a function that is only accessing the player's health and no one else's health. There's another, uh, there's some more interesting things that we can glean from here. Uh, we can see that uh, it's reading uh, in most of these from um, uh, an address in memory with an offset of 130. That means that's where the health is going to be stored and uh, read from is uh, inside of a struct with an offset of 130 is where you find the health. So that's just good too for a bunch of reasons. So it helps us form sort of an idea of what the player's health struct looks like. So um, let's start with the first one here, which has uh, almost the highest count. All right, this is a uh, reading from uh, this health field. So first, the first thing I do is I wanna find out um, what are all the addresses this instruction accesses. The reason why I do that is because I wanna see um, if it's only accessing the player's uh, address. And unfortunately, it's not. It's reading what could be health from every NPC in the area here. So I don't wanna use this. I wanna find uh, a piece of code that is only looking at the player's health. Hopefully, such a thing exists. A lot of times it does, but not always. Let's go to the next function here. Um, let's see what addresses this instruction accesses. Okay, a little better, but um, still too many. Let's remember that. Let's go to this one here, third one down. Still looks to be looking at every uh, NPC's health and the player's. Next one down. Everything. Oh, it's very sad, but um, it appears that in this game, um, there is no function that just looks at the player's health, unfortunately. Um, 
So we're gonna have to uh, um, do this a little bit of a different way. So let's uh, go back to the, the list of functions that are reading this. All right, so here we are back in the uh, second uh, instruction accessing uh, the player's health and also all the other NPCs. So I'm gonna, I wanna isolate it so it's only the player's health that we're looking at here. Here's the player's uh, health address. And remember, um, it's accessing that address um, as a, an offset from a base address, the base of the struct. Um, it's adding an offset of 130 to it. Let's just load up our little programmer's calculator here. And uh, this is in hexadecimal. Um, let's just grab the, uh, the address here. Very good. I'm going to um, subtract from this 130. So we want to break when RCX equals this here. This is going to be the actual address of the structure. Settle down there, buddy. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here, and then I'm going to do a set change break condition. And we want to have a condition of RCX equals that calculated value. And so here it is. This is just the players now. So is there anything here, any of these register states that tells me it's the players being accessed, special looking numbers, things like that. You can see it's accessing this address a whole bunch of different times with different values here. So uh, one thing that I see that I like is uh, some magical numbers being used for R13, R14, and R15. So um, let's just store this in our little copy paste buffer for now. And let's uh, see what is being accessed in terms of RCX when R14 is one. R14 is 1 and R15 equals 1. It's just a hunch, but that's what reverse engineering is, is working off hunches. As you can see this, it appears that the only address being accessed when we apply this filter here of R13 equaling 1, R14 equaling 1, and R15 equaling 1 is the players. It doesn't seem to be grabbing any other creature's uh, um, health. So there we have it. We have a function we can piggyback onto, and we have an appropriate filter um, we can apply that will ensure that it's only the player's health that we're grabbing. So let's write the code then that will inject uh, um, our code into uh, the game to grab this health. So here we're going to do Control Alt A to pop up our auto assembler, and uh, we're going to uh, do templates, do full injection. All right, now I don't work with the code uh, or the cheat engine uh, editor very much. I don't like it for a bunch of reasons. But here's the base of our in injection. Uh, uh, basically, it's going to be replacing this here. So um, I like to uh, basically take the code that's generated and I, I run it through a bunch of different um, uh, sort of uh, processes that uh, make it how I like it for my, my hacks. Um, so we're going to do that right now real quick here. And uh, I can go into more detail about how these work. If anyone's interested, just leave a comment and ask. So I'm gonna leave this off to the side here, and I'm gonna go into a little copy of Visual Studio I got running here. And yes, I have a uh, snippets file set up for hooks. And uh, let's name our hack here. We are uh, writing a hack that gets the player's uh, health. There we go. Omni player health hook. Um, the executable is secure. Exe. The address of the injection is 5A6E50. All right. I need to provide the actual bytes we'll be replacing. There we go. Get player health is the name of the actual function we're writing. And we have a no op of nothing. Okay, and then I move that over here to an ASM file, it's a little easier to edit. And we just want to make sure that we throw in the uh, original code that's uh, being replaced. And I think that's about it. All right, after I get this formatted properly in, in Visual Studio, which I just used for the snippets feature, really, um, I throw it into the actual editor we'll be using, which is a Notepad++. Here's our uh, cheat table here that we're going to be putting uh, the assembly into. Let's copy this over into it and uh, paste it right here. Now we want to separate the cleanup from the actual uh, injection. Put that under the disable. There we go. That's about it. All right. Um, so here's the uh, code that's going to get the player's health, right? So we need to actually store uh, this health somewhere. We need to create a pointer that points to it so we can find it. So right here we're going to allocate uh, um, player health. 
registered as a symbol. Make sure we add that to our cleanup code as well. You hear the enemy in the background there. All right. So um, this is where the injection's being made. It jumps to here, and here's the original code that has to go off, or else this won't function properly. So um, we need. This is where we need to apply our filter. If you remember what the filter is? Uh, it's when R13 and R14 and R15 all equal one. If, if none of that's true, then we skip the code that's going to be here. First of all, let's uh, back up our conditional flags since they're going to be messed up with um, while we're doing our comparisons here. We want to restore them down here, of course. So uh, we're going to check R13 if that's uh, 1. If it's not 1, then we abort, go to the original code. We're going to check if R14 is 1. If it's not 1, we're going to abort, go to the original code. Then we're going to check if R15 is 1. If it's not, we abort, we get the hell out of here. Otherwise, um, if we're at this point, then we're good. We found the player's health. So we want to move the address of, uh, address of RCX and store it um, in uh, player's health, the player health address. And player health. We're going to set the address of RCX to that. And there we go, we have our health. Just have to remember that offset though in the second tier. So I'm going to save my changes here and uh, let's reload the, uh, the cheat table. Okay, let's run the script and see if the game crashes. Yay, the game did not crash. So uh, let's see if we have a now persistent uh, health address. So we're going to do add address here, check pointer, and um, we're going to say this is the player's health. And uh, player health is the address there. And remember, the offset is 130. And there you go. We have the health, 100. And that will, um, game stop spinning. That will work every time the game loads. Just to prove it, um, change it to 50. You can see the bar move down there. Change it to 150. Boom, 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 boom. We found it. Good for us. And that's uh, one of the very first things we need in order to Omnify a game. The apocalypse system requires the health. A lot of things do. Um, and not only do we have, um, you know, the health disassembled so we can look at it, but more importantly, much more importantly, we have uh, uh, something I can use in my code to um, affect the player's health, to read from it, to, to write to it uh, in the form of this player health symbol. That's just going to give us what we need in order to identify the game as far as the player's health is concerned. Thank you everybody for joining me today in this first little look um, at Omnifine Sekiro. We'll be uh, doing another hack next time, uh, probably the player's coordinates. If you have any questions, let me know. After doing a few days worth of uh, sort of a data disassembly, all that, that's when we actually implement our omnified systems that make the game insane. And of course, once this is all done, we'll be streaming the gameplay of it live on my Twitch channel. Um, so check out my Twitch. Please follow me on there. This is where you can reach me and talk to me while I'm playing these games. Um, you can find me at twitch.tv slash omni. Um, say hi. Um, also, um, if you liked the video, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, it means a ton. Uh, join my Discord, I got a Discord y'all can check out as well, that'll all be in the description down below. Thank you so much, and have a good day.